Gold Star Tree for welcoming remarks. I'd like to ask Secretary of Veterans Services, Francisco Urena, no secret to, no stranger to anyone in this room, an Iraq veteran, Purple Heart veteran. Ladies and gentlemen, Secretary Francisco Urena. Thank you, Michael, and good afternoon to each and every one of you all. Thank you and welcome to your State House the Memorial Hall, an opportunity for us to recognize your continued sacrifice as Gold Star families. Thank you and welcome, but more importantly, a big warm welcome to all, all of our Gold Star families. Thank you. Each and every year I look forward to this annual tradition, an opportunity to be amongst our Gold Star families. Whether you lost your loved one recently, as some of you all have, or whether your, your loved ones were in the Gulf War, or in Vietnam, or in any other war, this is the beauty about this event. This is inclusive of every family, it's inclusive in a great connection, but more importantly, it allows Gold Star families to have connections to one another. On behalf of all of us from the Department of Veteran Services, I want to thank our sponsors here today of Military Friends Foundation, a great organization focused on the support of Gold Star families during their darkest hours, but more importantly, throughout the rest of the year. Thank you, God bless you, Merry Christmas, and may you enjoy the time with one another. Please rise. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Our first speaker is the Honorable Charlie Baker. Governor, we thank you for being here with your family and taking such an active role in this event and your continued support of Gold Star families. You and your team's presence today is emblematic of your personal commitment to the families in this room and across the Commonwealth. Ladies and gentlemen, Governor Charlie Baker. Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. We're going to expect all of you to get up and participate in a little while here. First of all, I want to thank the whole team to put this together. And I know I speak on behalf of Lieutenant Governor, my wife, Lauren, the Secretary, and the rest of the folks on our team. When I say how much we appreciate your presence here today at this very special occasion. And I, I have to say that as somebody who attends and participates in many events that honor and recognize the sacrifices that are made by the men and women in uniform and their family, I find this one to be particularly important. And I think in large part that's because it has to do with the holiday season and with Christmas trees and Gold Star family trees and this whole idea of family and faith and community, which is really what this time of year is all about. And I would hope that one way or another, as we all ponder and consider the sacrifices and the earning and the pain and the loss that goes with those they are represented by so many who are here today, that we also remember and appreciate that this is a time of renewal and commitment and a turning of the page. It's what Christmas is all about, right? It's what this season is all about. It represents a time where we're supposed to try to do the best we can to hug and honor our loved ones and turn the page and face the future. And this tree, this ceremony, this event, and so many members of the General Court, the Legislature, the Governor's Council, and others who are here today, they're here today for all of you. 
They're here today to say thank you. They're here to say to say God bless you. They're here to say we will be there for you, which we try to do here in the Commonwealth better than anybody else. And in some ways, it's also this unique opportunity we have during this holiday season to say we're going to stand with you as you turn the page to a new season and a new year. We get the fact that on the ground that doesn't change anything. But I know we all hope that in some small way our presence, our support, our hugs, our blessings, and our continued goodwill to you, to the communities and the organizations and the families that you represent helps you understand that you will never be alone here in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. We will always do what we can to be there with you and for you. And on that I want to turn the Mike over to Lieutenant Governor Karen Polito, who will also always be there and with you and for you forever. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. This is a beautiful room. This is a beautiful room, and the governor and I and our team and members of the legislature who come to this building, I see Marilyn Petito Devaney from our governor's council, who come to this building every day. We pass this, through this room to do our business, and sometimes we pause and look around and really appreciate it. But it's never as beautiful as this moment when we all come and fill this room uh, together. And I just come here feeling so honored to be in your presence. I feel, and I've said this before, I feel like I'm in your living room, that I'm part, being I'm just part of your family today. And at this time of year, as we all gather with our families, I feel quite blessed uh, to be among yours. This is a magnificent tree, and it's beautiful because of how it's decorated with the beautiful pictures and faces and descriptions and names of your loved ones. I see Santa. Thank you for coming, Santa. There are a lot of young, a lot of young ones here. We all love to see Santa. Last night, I attended the 20th anniversary of the cold storage fire that took five, six of our Worcester firefighters. We know them as our Worcester Six. And as I was talking with the governor about the tributes to the Worcester Six leading up to uh, last night, he said to me that for you in your community, where my home is, it will always feel like yesterday that that occurred, even though it was 20 years ago. And I feel that is so true, and so true for you, as we come here together, that it was like yesterday that your loved one was taken from you. No matter whether it was a year ago, or 10, or 20, or more. And the reason why it feels like yesterday is because your loved one is right here, in your heart, and never left you. And as I said last night, and I come here today, the best gift that we can give to you is to remember your loved one, is to speak their name, to look at their pictures, and to express to you our heartfelt appreciation and deep gratitude for his or her service to this commonwealth and to this country. And we can't say that enough. So the power of this gathering is just a moment for us, this is really 
for us to be able to say to you, thank you. Because your loved one and the love you feel for him or her burns in your heart and it's in our hearts too. I would also say that it's a time for us to always be aware and to never take for granted what we get up and enjoy every day in our lives. I've had the wonderful honor with the governor to represent every community of this commonwealth, all 351 municipalities. I've been able to visit all of these places that people call home. And in every community, there is a hero, there is a monument, there is an expression of gratitude for those who have served and sacrificed their lives. There's also a VSO officer available for every veteran who's come home to help them and their families. In every community, we think about how to make it better, making sure our kids have a great education, that people have good jobs, that they have safe communities because of our emergency responders and our police and firefighters who get up every day and do their work. The quality of life and the freedom that we have, the opportunities that we have to live the way we do, have come from you, have come from your loved ones and your sacrifices and your willingness to support their desire to wear the uniform, to serve this country, to stand up, stick together, and answer the call wherever it would take them. And for that, I count that blessing a one, of, one of the most precious in my life, and I know I speak for everyone here in this room. So thank you. It's an honor to be with you. Blessings from our hearts to yours. Thank you. Stand up, stick together, and answer the call wherever it would take them. And for that, I count that blessing a one, of, one of the most precious in my life, and I know I speak for everyone here in this room. So thank you. It's an honor to be with you. Blessings from our hearts to yours. Thank you. We are humbled to join with all of the families who have fallen here today. It is my honor to welcome forward the family of Navy, Navy Corpsman Megan Burns of South Deerfield for a reading. Governor Baker, veterans, families, and friends, I'm Charlie Woodcraft. Um, been part of the Burns family for uh, since 1983. When I met Matt, we were on active duty. We were young men, and I'm here to tell you about Megan Burns. Megan Elizabeth Burns was from Deerfield, Mass. She was born on Friday, August 25th, 1995, at 4:44 p.m. And she died on May 4th, 2019, in a senseless act of violence, a double murder suicide, helping a shipmate at Portsmouth, Virginia Naval Base. She was murdered by a fellow naval <clears throat> hospital corpsman. Megan had a sweet yet sassy personality. She was quick with a joke and quick to love. She was a fierce friend and a protector of the weak. She loved animals, the ocean, the environment, movies, shopping, and mimosas. <laughs> Megan joined the Navy in September 2015, and she became a hospital corpsman at Ace School in San Antonio, Texas. Her first duty station was in the emergency room at Naples, Italy. And she traveled to places all over Europe, like Paris, Berlin, London, Barcelona, to name a few. And she made many friends and met her fiance, James. From there, 
Megan was assigned to field medical school training in California. She fell in love with Southern California and its vibe. But due to an injury, she was reassigned to Portsmouth, Virginia. And the rest is unfortunate history. Megan's dream was continue to, to, excuse me, to continue a career in healthcare because she loved helping people. We are grateful to Military Friends Foundation for supporting us through the tragic loss of the Burns' daughter, Megan Elizabeth. Without hesitation, they organized and funded travel for several of Megan's military friends to attend her celebration of life. They also helped to fund a large portion of this event. The foundation has helped us connect to other Gold Star families and offer their support throughout this ordeal. Whenever we have reached out for help, their response has been, let's see what we can do. While we never want to be a part of the Gold Star Family Club, Military Friends Foundation has helped ease some of the pain and created friendships that will last a lifetime. A special shout out to Sarah Sweeney, Executive Director, who we wouldn't know what, excuse me, who we didn't know where we would be without her. We would also like to thank Secretary Francesca Arena for connecting us with the Foundation of all the help in Megan's affairs. This is from uh, Megan and Carolyn. I remember your first year, first Thanksgiving, first Christmas, first birthday. We were so happy and proud parents sharing our bundle of joy with the world. It is another year of firsts, a much sadder year. First birthday, first Thanksgiving, first Christmas without you. You are not here, but your spirit and your love live within us. Death leaves a heartache no one can heal. Love leaves a memory that no one can steal. That's an Irish poem. We miss you, Maggie. We are so proud of you. God speed, Angel. Thank you. Streets 
Rep Machino is here today. Rep Wong is here today. Rep Whalen is here today. Rep Schmidt is here today. Rep Kelkhorst is here today. Rep Sylvia is here today. Rep McGonagall is here today. Rep Lombardi is here today. Rep Gentile is here today. Rep Malio is here today. Rep Miranda is here today. And Rep Dykma is here today. And I'm sure there are others as well. And I think this speaks volumes to the love that we have in our heart for you today. Governor Baker, Mrs. Baker, Lieutenant Governor, Mr. Secretary, General Keith, and very important, the members of the Military Friends Foundation, Sarah, and the leadership, and Tough Rock, and many others who made this day possible for us to be together. And that you are the reason that people all over the world pray each and every day that our experiment in democracy continues and that we do not shy away from world leadership. Oh, Christmas tree, oh, Christmas tree, for you are so unchanging. Oh, Christmas tree, oh, Christmas tree, so to call forward Representative Jim Kelkhorse to introduce our next speaker. Thank you, Mike, and thank you, Sarah. I first want to start out by thanking all of you for the privilege to be here today. I want to thank in particular one family that's here with us from Newburyport, uh, one of the cities that I have the great privilege of serving in the State House. That's the Hines family. Uh, Steve and Sue Hines, parents of First Lieutenant Derek Hines, who gave his life in service of our country. It really gives me great privilege and great honor to introduce our next speaker, Tom Groke. I want to thank Tom Groke, and I want to thank Tom Groke for uh, continuing this wonderful tradition of the Military Friends Foundation, Tough Rock, with the Boston Athletic Association. Thank you very much, Tom. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, I stand before you with the deepest of respect for you, for you and Families like you have had to face what you have to face. It's been 50 years, more or less, since I left the United States Army. Uh, and over that time, my respect for those who have had to face with had to face what all of you have has only deepened over those years. And over that time, I have also come to know a number of Gold Star families more than I wish I had to, including Steve and Sue Hines, my boys, played hockey with Derek holidays to all of you as marked by this wonderful tree. Good day to you all. It is now my honor to call forward the family of Corporal Christopher Orlando, U.S. Marine Corps, for a reading. To sponsor an event such as this both honors and remembers our loved ones and is yet another example of your loyal and strong support of veterans, military, and Gold Star families. Thank you. On January 14, 2016, Chris and 11 fellow Marines were killed when two CH-53 helicopters crashed over the Pacific Ocean three miles off the coast of Oahu during a nighttime training mission. 
Those we love can never be more than a thought away, for as long as there's a memory, they live in our hearts to stay. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing Christopher's story with us today. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, the Adjutant General of the Massachusetts National Guard, Major General Gary Keith. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm going to be uh, very brief. One of the greatest benefits of being a public servant is, and I think everyone would agree, Governor on down, uh, no matter where we serve or what we do, is the friendship and the relationships you, you meet and you build in the role you serve in. And without a doubt, the one I am most grateful for is the, the Gold Star community. I don't really think you understand what an example you are to the rest of us. You are setting the benchmark in dignity and resiliency that no one can match. And, uh, I've said this to you before. If you ever need your guard to do anything, you, you know how to get a hold of me. Please call. And it's not me. I have a great team. The governor, when he appointed me to this position, I've heard him say this a number of times, not just to me, but to everyone. Let's make sure we do the right thing. If I can help you to make sure we are doing the right thing, you pick up the call and please give me, give me a ring. My wish for you this, this holiday season and every day is I, I hope your days are filled with nothing but great memories of your loved ones. Uh, I hope you're keeping them near and dear in your heart because we're keeping you near and dear in our heart. So please. Have a happy holiday season, have a healthy 2019, and as I said, whatever you need from me and your guard, please give us a call. Thank you very much. I'd now like to ask the children here today to come forward and join First Lady Lauren Baker, as she leads a great tradition here in the State House with Santa, reading to us the night before Christmas. <laughs> Not a creature was stirring, not even a mouse. The stockings were hung by the chimney with care in hopes that St. Nicholas soon would be there. Do you guys know who St. Nicholas is? Who? St. Nicholas! St. Nicholas! He's here somewhere. He'll come back okay. Yeah. The children were nestled all snug in their beds. Can you sneak over there? While visions of sugar plums danced in their heads. And Mama and her kerchief and I and my cat had just settled down for a long winter's nap. Chase loves naps. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what? Go to bed. That's awesome. Then Santa will know where to find you. When out on the lawn there rose such a clatter, I sprang from my bed to see what was the matter. Front yard. The moon on the breast of the new fallen snow gave luster of midday to objects below. This is too big. Here, Chase, you hold that page. This, look at this. When what to my wandering eye should appear but a miniature sleigh and eight tiny reindeer. Okay, you fold yours in. Away to the window I flew like a flash, tore open the shutters, and threw up the sash. With a little... Oh, we're getting our pages mixed up, I think. <laughs> so the sleigh with a tiny reindeer, with a little old driver so lively and quick, I knew in a moment it must be St. Nick. As I drew in my head and was turning around, down the chimney came St. Nicholas with a bound. He was dressed all in fur from his head to his foot, and his clothes were all tarnished with ashes and soot. A bundle of toys he had flung on his back, 
and he looked like a puppy, just opening his pack. His eyes, how they twinkled, his dimples, how merry. His cheeks were like roses, his nose like a cherry. His droll little mouth was drawn up like a bow, and the beard on his chin was as white as the snow. The stump of a pipe he held tight in his teeth, and the smoke, it encircled his head like a wreath. He had a broad face and a round belly that shook when he laughed like a bowl full of jelly. He was chubby and plump, a right jolly old elf, and I laughed when I saw him in spite of myself. <laughs> a wink of his eye and a twist of his head soon gave me to know I had nothing to dread. He spoke not a word, but went straight to his work and filled all the stockings and turned with a jerk and laying his finger on the side of his nose and giving a nod up the chimney he rose. <laughs> he sprang to his sleigh, to his team gave a whistle and away they all flew like the down on a thistle. <laughs> but I heard him, wait, hold on, can't miss this part. But I heard him exclaim as he drove out of sight. You guys Merry, know this one? Merry Christmas to all and to all a good night.
My son, Stephen Fortunato, the family in Massachusetts. My husband, Charles Matthews, U.S. Army, 82nd Airborne, Bronze Star recipient, Dennis Court, Massachusetts. My husband, James E. Rosad, twice awarded to Purple Heart, Vietnam, Attleboro, Massachusetts. My cousin, um, private first class, I don't know, Dolo Martinez, Taunton, Massachusetts, November 14, 2015. We love you to infinity and beyond. So proud of you. My brother, specialist Matthew Fellini, Rockland, Mass. My father, David Mitchell, from Summerlin, Massachusetts, U.S. Army. He's in the Korean War. My husband, Peter Lamarckia, from Belchertown, Massachusetts, served in Vietnam, died from the Hunan Hodgkin's lymphoma, December 16, 1992. Henry J. Lupian, Army 10th Mountain Division, and also Roland Jonah, USMC, both killed in action. Sister Corporal Carrie Durkin from Quincy, Mass, Army National Guard. My son, James M. Wheeler, United States Navy, 1981 to 85, passed in 89, <coughs> and I'm so proud of him. So happy to be here. <laughs> My husband, Earl K. Durkin. U.S. Army Captain, Vietnam, served two tours of duty, Lawrence, Massachusetts. My son, Matthew Evan Truby, Iraq, U.S. Army. <coughs> My son, PFC, Becky Kiernan, U.S. Marine Corps, Rochester, Massachusetts. Sergeant Christopher Vaz, U.S. Army, Korea, POW. My husband, James Walters, U.S. Air Force, Western Massachusetts. My husband, Dennis Dion, Specialist, U.S. Army, Vietnam, Lindbergh, Massachusetts. <coughs> My father, Sergeant Robert Barrett, former my father, Gilbert Paul, for the mass. Our son, Staff Sergeant Alexander Delita, U.S. Army Special Forces, Dunstable, Massachusetts. My son, George Scotty General, U.S. Navy, Herschel Gulf. My husband, George Mickey General, U.S. Air Force, Korea. <laughs> Sergeant Edward Shasta, East Bridgewater, Massachusetts, United States Marine Corps, Vietnam. Mm -hmm. Iraq and Afghanistan War Veteran, Sergeant First Class Alex Quinn. My son, Jeffrey Smith, died February. 11, 2018, U.S. Air Force. My husband is here. Susan, uh, 
um, um, Vietnam veterans died in Vietnam in 1992. My husband, John Richard, died in Vietnam with your message. My first husband, Sergio Corazzi, United States Air Force. My second husband, Mario Bellagio Brett, the Army, Pio Delgado. Oh, boy. My papa, Sergeant Margaret Lee Brown, died at St. Thomas College, Vietnam. My husband, Michael T. Hurley, originally of South Boston, Seaman First Class, U.S. Navy, who died many years later from airway disease contracted in the Navy with the asbestos pipe over his head in the bunk. Uh. Uh. Uh, my son, Michael James Burkley, Yes, uh, died 4th July 2009. My husband, Staff Sergeant David Ellis, Army, Korea, uh, for your treatments. My father, John T. Mulhane, uh, left three uh, babies um, in March 24th, 1945, after the, right after the Battle of the Bombs. My husband, Air Force Sergeant Paul Rashad, Vietnam, from Fall River. <laughs> My father, Jason, Jason Martin, uh, private second class U.S. Army. My son, Army Master James Anthony, second Salem Mass, Kent Parr, Afghanistan, December 8, 2000. My son, Army Specialist Scott Anthony Andrews, Afghanistan, 2010, Fall River. My son, First Lieutenant Derek Hines, Newport, Mass. In Lake Olaf, says in Frozen 2, the love is permanent. My son, Michael Chestnut, Sergeant, United States Army, 2018. My husband, Captain John J. Savage, Cooper Gunship Pilot, Vietnam, uh, from South Boston. I'm speaking for Dee Whitmore, who could be here today. Her husband, Everett Barris, um, U.S. Marines, Vietnam. Um, my father, Tommy, uh, Sergeant Tommy Day, uh, died in uh, 2014. Thank you.
Dan Marie's voice today since she has a language I Her husband, Lieutenant Colonel Michael, is the United States Marine Corps, Westminster Police. My husband, Chief Petty Officer Michael Andrew Connors, combat decorated, two tours of Vietnam, uh, Chief Petty, Massachusetts. A father of three, our dad, Private Jose Enrique Lasalle, from Dorchester, Massachusetts, he was taken from us August 5th, 2014. Uh -huh. Captain Jonathan Brad Harris, Marine Helicopter Pilot, uh, 207. Junior Rose, Sergeant Elton Gatchal, two tours Vietnam. I would now ask us all to join in a rendition of America the Beautiful. 